Entrez. Monsieur Félix Oui. I was expecting you. I knew you would come. Look at them, madame. Have you ever in your entire life seen anything so beautiful? I'm sorry, I don't know anything about stamps. Even if you don't know a lot about stamps, you'll probably know that some of the rarer ones are considered to be extremely valuable. And that leads to the next question, which is... What is it worth? Well, the money is unimportant. I'm afraid it's very important. Maybe it is important. Fortunes will be spent on stamps with upside down airplanes or a picture of Audrey Hepburn. What's valuable to me is how interesting they are. So let's go through my countdown of what I think are the top 10 most interesting valuable stamps. It is extremely unlikely that you'll come across any of these stamps in your own collection or other albums, but it's not impossible. Several of the stamps I'll be talking about are some of the most expensive stamps in the world. And of course, there are others out there that can make this list. Now, I love to learn about these stamps, but also I think it's important to know about these stamps in case you do come across one. Keep in mind that the value I'm going to be saying is either the estimated price or the last purchase price, and that could get out of date really quickly. So let's do this countdown from least valuable to most valuable, starting at number 10 with New Zealand's 1949 HMS Vanguard. This stamp was most recently sold for over 47,000 US dollars. Back in 1949, there was a scheduled royal visit by King George VI. He was supposed to arrive on this battleship, the HMS Vanguard. The battleship itself is interesting. It's the last one to have ever been launched. But it's not so much about the ship. It's about the fact that it never arrived. You see, King George VI fell ill, and so the trip was cancelled, but the stamps had already been printed. So the HMS Vanguard stamps were sent to the furnace to be incinerated, and it was believed that they were all gone, but in 1979, two damaged ones showed up for auction. Survivors of the furnace. There have been a total of seven stamps that have emerged, with one selling for over $47,000 in 2017. So it is possible that there are others out there. This is my HMS Vanguard stamp. It's from St. Helena and is commemorating the royal visit that happened back in 1947 to the island. While the New Zealand one is tens of thousands of dollars, this one I got for just over one dollar. It's the best I could do. Okay, number nine. This one is an inverted error known as the Omgekeerde Dendermond or the inverted Dendermond from Belgium, valued at over 87,000 US dollars. This happens when a sheet needs to be run twice through a printer, once to get the border in a certain color and the second time to print the image in the middle. Just as in this case, the sheet was placed the wrong way around during the printing and we see the town center is upside down or inverted on the stamp. These were printed in 1920. I have the non-inverted ones, but there are 17 known inverted ones out there today. But now listen to this. Back in 1942, a stamp dealer in Brussels was murdered and he had two of the inverted stamps. Those stamps went missing. Neither the murderer nor the stamps were ever found. Hmm. Number eight. Germany's Audrey Hepburn stamp almost issued in 2001. One of these sold for 176,000 US dollars in 2017. Audrey Hepburn, who we saw at the beginning of this video in the movie Charade, was a super famous actress from Hollywood's golden age. She was in movies such as My Fair Lady, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, all iconic hits. While in 2001, Germany was issuing stamps featuring film stars, one of which was Audrey Hepburn. They printed 14 million of these stamps, but failed to first ask for permission from the actress's family. Before the launch of the stamp, a sheet was sent to her son, who objected to the image and refused to let the stamp be printed. You see, she's smoking in this picture with a cigarette holder in her mouth, commonly associated with the Audrey Hepburn look. The picture was taken from a photograph of her biting her sunglasses, and the Germans replaced it with a cigarette, which really wasn't necessary. I understand why they did it, but I prefer the picture with the sunglasses. So all 14 million stamps were destroyed, except for a handful of sheets, other than the one kept by the postal service and one by Audrey's son, others started to show up. It's believed that somebody in the postal service took them to use on regular mail. And believe it or not, they've been found in Kilauea, which are bags of used stamps that stamp collectors purchase uh, to separate and place in their albums. This is a bag of German Kilauea, which got me thinking. I 
have these Audrey Hepburn stamps issued back in 2003 from the United States Postal Service. Yes, they asked for permission, but these stamps are only worth 37 cents, I'm afraid. What makes the story even better is that several of the stamps were auctioned off with proceeds benefiting charities. And also that she starred in that role in Charade where she's asking questions about the most valuable stamps in the world. And now she's on one. That's pretty cool. All right, number seven. The Mahatma Gandhi 10 rupees service stamp issued in 1948. A value of 205,000 US dollars. Now I have a version that is not worth $205,000. But this is perhaps India's most famous stamp. You see, it was decided that Gandhi was going to be on a stamp in January of 1948, making him the first Indian to be depicted on stamps of India. However, that same month, Gandhi was assassinated. So the government decided to issue these stamps as a memorial. Now, I didn't have too much of an easy time getting a hold of one of these stamps, but if you can, I recommend it because it is a very special stamp. It's just not worth $205,000 because it doesn't have the word service overprinted on it. So only 100 of these stamps printed in two sheets of 50 were issued with the word service over printed for government use only. One of the sheets remains intact at India's National Archives, but the other was given to dignitaries to use. There are suggestions that maybe 18 are out there in private hands. In 2017, four of these joined together sold for 640,000 US dollars. Wow. All right, number six. The whole country's red, a Chinese stamp issued for half a day in 1968. One of these went for $475,000 in 2009. It portrays a Chinese worker, farmer, and soldier in the foreground holding Mao's little red book, consisting of quotations from the Chinese chairman at the time. There is a sea of red flags and the map of China in red with the imprinted golden words, the whole country is red in reference to the communist revolution. The stamp was issued, but then it was quickly recalled once a mistake was identified. And the mistake is Taiwan is outlined in red, but not colored in red. This is a big mistake for the People's Republic of China because they claimed and still do claim sovereignty over the state. So from their perspective, it very much should have been colored in red. The government recalled it and destroyed all the stamps. The official reason is that the map was missing some other islands, but it was really missing one big island. Since the stamps were issued for a short period of time, they did make their way into the hands of some people and did not get destroyed. I have a couple of replicas showing the two different sizes. The larger one is what sold for $475,000, while the smaller one sold for about $97,000 in 2011. The designer of the stamp is said to have thought he would be jailed for the mistake. Thankfully, he was not. But that's a pretty scary mistake to make. How can I tell that these are actually replicas and not the real thing? Number five is perhaps the most famous of the valuable stamps. The Inverted Jenny issued by the US in 1918 and valued at 1.3 million US dollars. This is not only an inverted error of an airmail stamp, but it's also the first airmail stamp that the US issued, featuring the modified Curtis Jenny plane pictured on the stamp. Now it's very much believed that only one sheet of a hundred stamps were printed with this error. Although I do seem to recall Homer Simpson found one. Ooh, five cents each. Junk. Junk. The airplane's upside down. Now, part of the fame associated with these stamps is due to the many stories about them. Each stamp is referred to by its placement on the sheet, so it's assigned a number, 1 through 100. And in 1977, number 18 was stolen before it was recovered in the 1980s, but the thieves had cut the perforation off of one side to disguise it as a different stamp on the sheet. What's even more crazier is that a block of four of these stamps were stolen in 1955, positions 65, 66, 75, and 76, known as the Stolen McCoy block, as it was named after Ethel McCoy, the owner. Now in 1970, two of them showed up in auction catalogues and were recovered by the FBI. A reward had been offered for the other missing two, but in 2016, one of them went up for auction by someone who inherited it from their grandmother in the UK. So there's one more stolen inverted Jenny out there yet to be found and returned to its rightful owner. Now the USPS issued these in 2013. It's a commemorative sheet for the inverted Jenny. 2.2 million of these were printed and deliberately 100 sheets were inverted inverted Jennies. So they were the right side up, which is pretty cool. And they actually go for a large sum of money as well these days. Now, number four. 
1847 Blue Mauritius Post Office. One was sold for 1.67 million US dollars back in 2011. This you could say is like the original extremely valuable stamp. It features Queen Victoria's profile along with the words post office on the left hand side. There are several later issues with the words post paid instead of post office like my torn one here. There's very few with post office. In fact, there's 14 known versions of blue and 12 of the orange variety. And you can see images of these stamps on these commemoratives celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Blue Mauritius. I've already made a video about these stamps, which you can go watch. But to add to it, the Mauritius post office issued these stamps for the governor's wife to use on invitations for a ball she was throwing. The rarity behind them is what's driven the price up so high. They are certainly very rare and very expensive. A pair of the two, a blue and an orange on a cover, sold for $4 million once. Number three, the Treskilling Yellow from Sweden, issued back in 1855 and valued to be at least 2.3 million US dollars. This was the most expensive stamp in the world when it was sold for 2.3 million dollars in 1996. So in 1855, Sweden prints its first postage stamps in five denominations. Each denomination was in a different color. These are reprints from Stockholmia in 1955, celebrating the 100th anniversary of Sweden's first stamp. What must have happened was a sheet of the three skilling stamps, which was usually printed in green, was accidentally printed in the eight skilling color, which was yellow. And therefore the three or trace skilling color error happened. This was unknown until 1886, when a young collector found it in his grandmother's attic, the only one ever found. It changed hands many times. Even the famous stamp collector Philip von Ferrari had it. If somebody was to find another one, it would make headlines. Well, that's true for all these stamps, really. Number two, the Benjamin Franklin Z Grill issued by the United States in 1868 for just one cent. The estimated value today is $3 million. These were very common stamps in the 1860s and they had a grill on the back which is an impression made on the stamp to allow the paper to better absorb the ink from the cancellation when the stamp is used, making it way more difficult to try and reuse a stamp and cheat the postal system. I have a couple of the Benjamin Franklins from 1868, but none with the Z grill. I have an E grill, which is a different pattern. There's a D and E grill, which were way more common. Uh, the Z grill was barely used. And that just refers to the pattern of the impression on the back. Only two Benjamin Franklin Z grills have been found. One is locked away in the New York Public Library and the other is in private hands. It was traded for a block of four inverted jennies, which had a price tag of $3 million. And that's how I give it this estimated value. The trade was made by the famous fund manager, Bill Gross, who really needed the stamp to complete his collection. And since one of them is locked away in the public library, the other one had a high trade value, but it worked well for both collectors. A block of four inverted jennies with the Ben Ziegrel that finished the collection. Before I hit number one, here's some honorable mentions. The Austrian Red Mercury newspaper stamp, estimated to be 40,000 US dollars. Very few of these were printed, making it a rare newspaper stamp. There's Western Australia's Inverted Swan, estimated anywhere between 37 to 80,000 US dollars. Of course, rare. It's one of the first inverted errors to ever been printed. The Hawaiian missionary stamps, known for primarily being used by missionaries working on the Hawaiian islands. Some have gone for 35,000, while a cover featuring two of them have gone for 2 million. A jealous philatelist once murdered his stamp collecting friend in France and stole the very rare two cent version. Unbelievable. And the old German state of Baden issued stamps in which each denomination came in a different color. The nine was printed in green instead of pink. An easy mistake for the printer as he thought it was a six. And the green stamps with the nine denomination are estimated to be over $1.5 million. Number one is of course the British Guiana one cent magenta last sold for 9.5 million US dollars. There's only one known to be in existence and it's not the prettiest stamp. Just take a look at it. Beauty certainly did not contribute to the $9.5 million price tag. It's more about the story of the stamp. 
It was issued by British Guiana in 1856. A shipment of stamps did not reach the post offices in time, so the local postmaster ordered the printing of some basic stamps, such as this one. I also did a video on this stamp where I visited the One Cent Magenta in Washington, D.C. when it was on display, and try to see it in this very dark, secure display box. A great set of stamps to get is the 1967 Guyana Commemoratives featuring the One Cent Magenta. And so the story of the stamp is interesting in that the history of it involves some interesting owners. Philip von Ferrari, of course, had it, but so did Arthur Hind, who may have deliberately burnt a second one that he came across using his cigar. Also, John Dupont from the Dupont family owned the stamp. He ended up murdering an Olympic wrestler and spent the rest of his life in jail. It was eventually sold in 2014 for $9.5 million, the highest price ever paid for a stamp. Now, let's just remember that although rarity and the story behind the stamp help to determine its value, it really comes down to how much somebody's willing to pay for it. If nobody's willing to pay the price anymore, then the value will drop. After all, these are pieces of paper, and therefore they're considered investments with investment risk. So would you be willing to spend your tens of thousands or millions on one of these stamps? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, I'd love to find one of these stamps. So I'm going to go through this bag of German used stamps and see if I can find Audrey Hepburn. Thanks for watching.